Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Thursday, March the 18th already. It's 9.19 a.m. And it's a strange thing. I wanted to find the message I got from the Lord on the two raptures. Or I wanted to see, did he use the word rapture or did was it just harvest? I know he called the first one the barley harvest. The second one, the wheat harvest. And last night, um, Kathy was doing a live stream video. And I'm trying to think which video she shared. The person called it the barley. Anyway, that doesn't matter. I just wanted to see for myself. Well, anyway, I got out this journal, and I just opened it up. And it's dated Thursday, August 6th, 2015. Really, that's six years ago. And it was 1.50 a.m. So clearly the Lord woke me up, and I thought I would share it with you. Because... We're in this boat now more than back then. And maybe it'll encourage you. Maybe you'd like to share it. Um, I'll just, it's kind of a long one. But I wanted to share it with you again. Okay, it says, I've been in a dream and the Lord is showing me a revelation. Now, apparently it wasn't necessary to write down the dream because it goes right in to this those who are not really here this is the revelation those who are not really his but think they are will be the very ones to harm us in some way Now, Jesus said, some will be betrayed by loved ones, others because of spirits of envy and pride will send or try to send curses upon my bride. Those who believe they are right will be and are being the very ones attacking my bride through their hurtful words. The words of those who should know better will attack my bride. There is power in your words. And for some reason I wrote power in all caps. You can use them for good or for evil. You can speak life or death over someone. This is why I must come soon. My Philadelphia church has but a little strength because it is being zapped, taken by words of mockery, strife, denial, and even hatred. So this is like <laughs> one of Susan Davis's messages, which are older than this, where he's saying, I must come soon, or I'm coming soon. Well, to him, it is soon. You think about it. 2,000 years he's waited. So while we're going, Laura, I thought you were coming soon. <laughs> You're, we're still here. So try to understand his timing is not the same as ours, okay? All right. Um, okay, let's see. It, it is being zapped. Our powers being our strength is being zapped, taken by words of mockery, strife, denial, and even hatred. Remember when I said to hate your brother is the same as murder? I meant it. 
The rest of my church must quickly realize what I am saying is true. They must repent of their choice to ignore my warnings. They must repent of disbelief. Pause. Now look what's happening because when messages like this went out years ago, to us, this was years ago. How many heard these kind of messages and just ignored them? And now look what they've done. I understand, my wayward children, that you have a very strong delusion pulling on you. It is from the enemy. You are following a man, not me. Oh, the devil has deceived so many of my good children into believing lies that sound so right to you. This is because you lack the complete infilling of my Holy Spirit. Pause. I beg of you. If you don't have the complete infilling, please be on your knees asking Jesus. I've been on mine and I can do it. For a little while, and I know things are changing. Anyway, I'll continue. Let's see, that complete and feeling of the Holy Spirit. Yes, you do lack this. No amount of arguing can change this fact. I want all my children to pray to me in tongues. See, a lot of people don't believe that. This is true. It is all over your New Testament. One example, Ephesians 6. And pray in the Spirit at all times with all manners of prayers and petitions and for all the saints. Now, why is that in there? All it does is cause arguments because people don't want to do it. Or they're afraid they won't get it if they ask. Whatever their reason. How can you not see it? It's just like the once saved, always saved group. There's so many scriptures in there that talk about doing works good works, whatever you do for the least of these, that you do unto me, and so on and so on and so on. And yet they want to claim, once you accept Jesus as your Savior, you're saved. You're going to heaven no matter what. No matter what. What are they going to take thinking that's true? Why are so few seeing it? Because like Eve in the Garden of Eden, you are being beguiled by the serpent of old. Probably not most of you. This is probably preaching to the choir. But maybe there's a few who are new and haven't ever thought of these things. I hope to reach you. Or someone you share this with. He has you captivated by men on earth. Who have, who are corrupting my word. And twisting the scriptures to suit your own agenda. How else my children. How else can there be so many doctrines. 30,000 doctrines, 30,000 denominations are in America. Just in America. Who took that poll? I don't know. Probably Karma or CARM, Christian Apologetics Research Ministry. 
they might have come up with that. I don't know. I read it somewhere online. I don't remember. How else my children... Hmm. A strange went black. How else could there be any... Could there be so many doctrines? They cannot all be right. They can't. That would make me a double-minded man. <laughs> that would make my word less than perfect. Have you ever thought of that? You are in a time of your life that you cannot afford to be debating my word with anyone. Those I have chosen to bring you my warnings are willing vessels, but you are not, and you will soon see my wrath come upon you if you do not repent of your disbelief and pride stop mocking my messengers and prophets this is truly for a special certain people okay you check your own heart you'll know if he's talking to you or not these are my watchmen on the wall chosen to serve me for your benefit. Now choose you this day whom you will serve, me or Satan. I, the Lord your God, have spoken. It is I, your Savior, King Jesus, Yahushua HaMashiach. And the time was 2.05 a.m. So that's the end of that message. And I felt led to share it because I opened right up to it and I was like, mm -hmm. you know, I was reading it. I was like, wow. You know, maybe people need to hear this again. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. So I'll plead the blood of Jesus over this message. And I pray that it helps even one person to change and get right. To stop being prideful. Stop hurting your brothers and sisters in Christ if you are. Watch how you say things. Watch how you put forth. You might even be right. But are you saying them in love or with an attitude? Okay, let me finish. Uh, I plead the blood of Jesus over this video. Each and every single one of us. If you're watching this video, I plead the blood of Jesus over you. And over your devices. All of our devices, so they'll keep working. And our internet connections. And so forth. The things that the powers that be like to mess with. So we can't do what we're supposed to do. I love each and every one of you. And I pray that I never share a thing that is not the truth. I am praying harder than ever that the Lord will use this broken vessel now repaired by Jesus. It was broken, but now I'm fixed. And I pray that you will be too, if you're not. In Jesus' name, I pray that for you.
I'll end it there. I'll talk to you later. Soon. <laughs>